Hello friends, this video on anatomy of flowering plants part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So to start with, we will talk about tracheids. So what are these tracheids? They are tubular structure which is very very clear from this diagram. Now a small tip which I would like to give you is since in biology you will we will talk about so many different things when, when we talk about morphology or when we talk about anatomy we talk about so many different structures so many new names so sometimes it becomes very difficult to remember the characteristics of each each part of a plant right so it is always good to have the picture in mind so if you have if you recollect or if you try to understand the characteristics of trachids looking at the picture then it becomes easy to remember it you don't get confused with what is a trachid and what is a vessel right and that is why we show you so many pictures okay now trachids are tubular structure the structure is almost like a tube conduct water and minerals vertically now i think when we talk about xylem the conduction is mostly vertical because the roots are at the below and all other parts of the plant is above so the conduction of water and minerals has to happen upward so that has to be in the vertical direction so this tubular structures or trachids actually conduct water and minerals vertically these are dead cells without protoplasm. So what is protoplasm? It is nothing but the living matter or the fluid present inside the cell. Uh, the cytoplasm basically. So uh, there is no cytoplasm. Now once the cell is dead, there are no cellular processes happening inside the cell. Correct? There is no respiration happening. There is no need of any of the cell organelles. So there is no protoplasm. The next one that is vessel. What does it do? They are also tubular cells with little tapering ends. Okay, so the ends, it, it goes a little like this. I mean, they, they are not exactly the entire thing is of the same thickness, but towards the end, it becomes little tapering. Now, each vessel is made up of many cells and each cell is known as a vessel member. So, many vessel members together form a vessel. These are lignified cell walls without protoplasm. Again, they also do not have protoplasm. So they are also dead cells and the walls are lignified. That means lignin is present on the wall. Whenever lignin, lignin is something which actually makes the wall very strong. It increases the strength. So these vessels also have got strong cell walls. However, perforations are present. What are perforations? Perforations are small pore-like structures or small holes which are present on the walls of the vessels. Now, as I said, the walls are lignified. So, the walls are made up of lignin, very strong walls, but they do have some holes. What is the purpose of the holes? Through these holes, the vessel members are interconnected. As I said, one vessel is made up of many vessel members. So when I say a vessel, so here in this picture, you actually see a vessel. Now this vessel is not one single vessel. This vessel is made up of many vessel members. So many vessel members is constitutes one vessel. Now these many vessel members, so basically, here you might wonder that there is no tapering end which I can see because this itself is made up of many tube-like structures which are having tapering ends. So these perforations which you see, these perforations actually help the vessel members to interact with one another. Right? So that is the purpose of these perforations. The third one is xylem parenchyma. So what does it do? These are thin walled living cells. So now again, these are parenchyma cells. So they are living cells. So now introduce you one thing. What is parenchyma? Parenchyma is nothing but a simple permanent tissue. So here in xylem, one of the components is a parenchyma. So parenchyma cells are also one type of cell which is present inside xylem. So they are living cells as we discussed before also and they are generally thin walled. The walls are not that thick. So here the cell walls, the thin cell wall is made up of cellulose. So it is like moderately rigid. 
they help in food storage parenchyma the basic packing tissue we talked about it before food storage is one of the important function of parenchyma they conduct water sideways now just now just some time back i told you that when i talk about xylem the conduction should be primarily vertically but not always vertically because there might be some plants where where the plant is not that tall and um, long right there are some plants which grow horizontally we have uh, learned a le we have learned a lesson on diversity in living organisms right where we talked about the plant kingdom and we saw we learned about a variety of plants we talked about so many plants like stolons and suckers runners so we saw those plants they do not grow vertically upwards they grow horizontally so when something is growing horizontally if you if we say that the xylem is going to conduct only vertically so what happens to those kind of plants which grow horizontally so they are gone they are dead so there has to be some element which will conduct the water and minerals even sideways so that is done by xylem parenchyma not only talking about those plants even you consider a normal plant we say that water and minerals will be conducted only vertically in that case what will happen it will go up from roots to the stem now there are so many lateral branches here and there so what happens to those lateral branches for that you need to conduct water sideways as well for example this is a plant okay these are the roots so now water is getting conducted vertically now this plant will also have branches now these branches might also have sub branches right so now if you say that the water will only be conducted vertically then what how will the water get conducted sideways because even they need water and minerals right so both vertical conduction and sideways conduction are needed so for the sideways conduction is xylem parenchyma and for the vertical conduction is the trachytes the fourth component is xylem fibers these are nothing but they are only used for support just to support right so now we spoke about all the four elements we saw that they all perform some specific function now how do they all synchronize their function now as a whole xylem so what is the function of xylem as i mentioned before the function of xylem is to conduct water and minerals from roots to all other parts of the plant now in order to do that it needs to conduct water vertically from roots to upward for that we have trachytes it also needs to conduct water sideways so that all the lateral branches can get it so for that we have xylem parenchyma now you also need to support the plant a, a basic support to the plant is always needed because as the plant grows the need for support keeps on increasing right so for that we have xylem fibers so each of these elements performing a particular function but all together they are performing the entire function of the xylem right so that is how xylem is a complex tissue okay so with this i think the structure and function of xylem is quite clear another important point to note here is gymnosperms lack vessels in their xylem so there are no vessels in gymnosperms because gymnosperms do not have uh, they do not have flowers right gymnosperms are like uh, pine deodar they are all gymnosperms where we do not have flowers so such plants do not have vessel that is one important point to be noted here we will now talk about protoxylem and metaxylem so this is another uh, concept which comes into picture because there is one xylem which is formed before and there is another xylem which is formed in the later stages of a plant life cycle so that is why we have two different terms protoxylem and metaxylem so let us see what are they protoxylem is the first formed primary xylem so the first formed xylem is the protoxylem 
it has a smaller lumen so when i say smaller lumen what is lumen lumen is basically uh, the inside cavity of a tube like structure for example this is a tube this is another tube so both are tube right but here the lumen is small so this space which you have inside the tube that is referred to as the lumen here here this is the lumen so this is a narrower lumen whereas this is a wider lumen now when i talk about protoxylem they have narrow lumen smaller lumen so protoxylem can be represented something like this The next one is metaxylem that is the later formed primary xylem so both are primary xylem now you might again have a question in your mind what is this primary xylem and secondary xylem now so that will become clear after some time so for now you just know that okay primary xylem is the only thing that exists what is secondary xylem that we'll discuss later so in primary xylem itself there are two stages one is earlier formed which is protoxylem the one which is formed later is the metaxylem and this metaxylem has a larger lumen so it is somewhat like this a wider lumen so it will look somewhat like this bigger lumen correct okay now again there can be different types of arrangements of protoxylem and metaxylem now when we talk about the internal structure of different plant parts like uh, the internal structure of the root or the stem we see that the protoxylem and the metaxylem are arranged in some specific fashion so basically there are two possible arrangements of protoxylem and metaxylem the first one is endarch and the second one is exarch so these are the two possible arrangements of protoxylem and metaxylem now what happens in endarch is the protoxylem lies inside the metaxylem what does that mean that means the protoxylem is towards the center and the metaxylem is towards the periphery so that is when it is possible that the protoxylem lies inside the metaxylem correct so in this case it would be something like this let us suppose these are the protoxylem and outside the protoxylem would be the metaxylem so here basically the metaxylem is towards the periphery or towards the boundary and the protoxylem is towards the center right so this arrangement is known as endarch now when i talk about exarch it is just the opposite so exarch x means outside so here the protoxylem lies outside metaxylem so that means the smaller ones will be outside and the bigger ones will be inside so the metaxylem would be towards the center and the protoxylem would be towards the periphery an arrangement like this now you might ask where is its application i mean where do you actually see such arrangements like that uh, it is arranged in this way and that way so where do you actually see them so now the answer to that is when we will talk about the internal structure of a root or the internal structure of a stem this is the arrangement that is exarch this is the arrangement which you will see in root whereas this is the arrangement that is endarch which you will see in stem so when we will talk about the just remember this in your mind when we will talk about the internal structure of stem you will actually see that the metaxylem is outside the protoxylem and when when we talk about uh, the root we will see that the protoxylem is outside the metaxylem so these are the two different types of arrangements of protoxylem and metaxylem okay thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again